Traveling changes people. First of all, it broadens our horizons and second of all, it transforms our priorities and values. Aziza realized that she is not like she used to be before. Who would have thought that an Instagram blogger might be shy? But it happens. That's fine. Could you just ask them not to look at me? I don't want it. I'm embarrassed. What did we see in the last episode? The historical and cultural center Ancient Taraz, the rest stop for ancient travelers Toktul Karavansarai, Tektumas Mausoleum, and a mysterious ancient settlement of Akitas. And in today's episode, you will learn about one of the most tragic love stories not inferior to the Shakespearean saga about Romeo and Juliet. There is also going to be a story about a nanny. Can't wait to tell you about it, so let's get started. What kind of historical conditions had to coincide so that Taraz could acquire its monumental and religious architecture? First, it had to become the headquarters of the Karakhanids at the time of their greatest power, and second, at about the same time, Islam started to spread in Kazakhstan. At this time, the mausoleum of Karakhan appeared in Taraz. And again, the secret within a secret. There are three versions about who is buried in the tomb. According to one of the versions, Kara Khan was a descendant of Koja Akhmet Yasawi. Another legend says that Kara Khan is a saint who came to the steppe to popularize Islam. And the third version says that the mausoleum was built by the ruler of the city at the time in honor of the saint, but he named it after himself. The mausoleum was designed as a monumental and religious building. This is evidenced by the inscription on the tomb. On the plate of the mausoleum, it is written, La ilaha il Allah Muhammadu Rasulu Allah, which translates as there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Many who come here know that this person was devout and God-fearing who actively preached religion. Therefore, people began to call him saint, and from 1856 to 1936, the city of Taraz was called Aulia Ata. From the 17th to the middle of the 19th century, the remains of the city, which at the time was called Yani and had been burnt at one time by Genghis Khan, fell under control of the Kokand Khanate. A place near the Karakan Mausoleum was gradually populated, settling on this territory people believed that they were under the protection and patronage of the saint. In 1858, the city was named Aulia Ata. Under this name, it became part of the Russian Empire in 1864. You know, I'm not tired of repeating this, but no matter how urban or modern you are, every time you contemplate such sites, see the Arabic script or hear a prayer, you just want to be silent. Stand up and feel the moment. While Aziza is imbued with the moment, we will tell you about the architecture of the tomb. The mausoleum retained its original appearance until the beginning of the 20th century, but it was greatly dilapidated from time to time. Something had to be done to preserve this medieval monument. In 1906, people who were always respectful of their ancestors' memory gathered together and carried out the restoration of the mausoleum from old photographs with the participation of authoritative people living in this area. But if you notice, all the stones of the old mausoleum are very simple and consist of 33 varieties of figured bricks. I apologize. To be precise, it is more correct to say more than 30 varieties. Tashkent Imam Said Bakanov financed its construction. According to the memoirs of old-timers, the restoration of the mausoleum was done by Uzbek masters, who on a medieval foundation erected a typical example of Central Asian religious architectural building. During the transformational changes in the Soviet Union, the original decorative facade design was irretrievably lost. There are only a few terracotta bricks built into the wall. Bricks store Muslim inscriptions of worshippers of the saint in the form of prayers and sayings. The front facade of the mausoleum is facing south, framed by minarets at the edges. In the center of the mausoleum, there is a tombstone. Prayers are constantly going on in the mausoleum. The stream of visitors is endless. 
Girls, I want to remind you that there is a very strict dress code. For example, they didn't let me in because, without thinking, I came here in a short skirt. Of course, you can wrap scarves around your waist, you can buy them at the entrance, but it's better to think about an appropriate outfit in advance. Why didn't I think about it beforehand? If you do not know how to dress in a holy place, then here are some tips for you. Women should hide their entire body except for the face, hands and feet. Hair should be completely hidden under a scarf. Men shouldn't wear shorts or very tight pants. The color of clothes should not be too bright and the cut of the clothes shouldn't be tight-fitting. Also, all pilgrims leave their shoes at the entrance. The rules are quite simple and are not too difficult to follow. Foreigners also often come here, most often Europeans, to find out more about the history of the country, to admire the local historical sites. I can't name the exact quantity, but they come very often. They wear special clothes. Perhaps this is a sign of respect. Enough about architecture and history. It's time to talk about love. Let's see what sites Taraz residents visit during pre-wedding festivities. By the way, newlyweds are very frequent visitors at the Karakan Mausoleum. I guess it is because this place is a cool location for photos. Indeed, the architecture of the 11th century is very original, and it is located right in the center of the city at the intersection of Tolibi and Baizag Batir streets. To understand why it is so important for newlyweds to visit the mausoleum of Karakan, you need to know the legend connected with it. There are 28 different versions of this legend. We chose the most popular one. Beautiful Aisha was the daughter of Zengi Baba, a student of Koja Ahmed Yasawi. When Karakan saw the 16-year-old Aisha, he instantly fell in love with her. Aisha also fell for Karakan. However, Aisha's father refused to give away his daughter to the ruler of Taraz, believing that he wasn't noble enough for her. Soon Karakan came back to his homeland with nothing, and the girl could not find peace. Deciding at all costs to see her beloved, she asked her parents for blessings. Aisha's act was contrary to the laws of Islam, and angry Zengi Baba forbade her to go to see Karakan. But nothing could stop the brave girl. Aisha warned her mother and at night she quietly left the house with her nanny. They were going to Taraz. In a few moments, Aziza will tell in more detail about deadly circumstances. We intend to say that in the end the girl had died and Karakan, mourning for his beloved, built the mausoleum at the place of her death. What is curious about this version of the legend is Aisha's attitude. She went to her beloved despite her father's ban and ignored all norms of women's behavior in society back then. She was an Amazon of the steppe, who could ride a horse on the same level as a man, who could shoot from a bow and handle a saber. She could hunt for a wolf with a knife. These were the Amazons of our steppe. They certainly never were like women of the Middle East. In general, myth-making can be an excellent marketing ploy for all historical tourist sites. Beautiful places aren't enough for tourism development. For example, even though there is nothing, you can easily develop tourism. There is a great storytelling tool for this. If you connect a story with a place, you can come up with a legend, so you can convey to people to any prospective guest. In fact, if a guest is interested in a legend, if the way he was told is compelling to him, then you can attract him to visit. Let's get back to the Taraz's newlyweds. The guide of the mausoleum of Karakan, Akpan Jamal, explained what national quality is associated with the wedding pilgrimage in Taraz. 
Residents of Taraz, as well as guests from all over Kazakhstan, especially young people, visit this place with a desire to honor the memory of Aisha and Kara Khan. They read Quran and receive blessings. After all, Kazakhs are superstitious people, and it is believed that people come here with the hope that their love will also be eternal and mutual, and that they will live together with their spouse forever. Aziza also decided to take a photo for happiness at the mausoleum of Karakan. Repeat the photo, post it using the hashtag across Central Asia, and win prizes. Karakan lived a long life. He had several wives, only the history does not remember their names. At his deathbed, Karakan bequeathed to bury him in a place from where Aisha's mausoleum could be seen. It is time for us to leave Taraz and go to the mausoleum of a brave girl who fought for her happiness. We drive 18 kilometers from the city in the direction of the village of Aisha Bibi, where everyone is able to show you where Aisha Bibi mausoleum is located. If you're not driving a car, you can take a regular bus from the city to the village of Aisha Bibi. The Monument of Love and Fidelity. There are only two of such monuments of love in the world, the Taj Mahal in India and this one on the territory of Jambal region. It is necessary to popularize this, so beautiful women will visit our mausoleum more. Kara Khan and Aisha Bibi thought out everything to communicate at a distance and receive news from each other. We need to talk to other couples in love. There is a tradition here in Taraz that on the wedding day, newlyweds first visit the Karakan Mausoleum and then come here to the Aisha Bibi Mausoleum. According to the legend, Karakan and Aisha Bibi were lovers, and it so happened that the girl was bitten by a snake and unfortunately did not live to see her own wedding. And when the newlyweds first come to Karakan's Mausoleum and then here, it's as if they connect to these energies. Who would have thought that Taraz people are so romantic? All the brides who have been here say that they have experienced the extraordinary effect of the aura that is coming from the carved walls of the mausoleum. It is understandable. Aisha Bibi is the only architectural monument in Kazakhstan which is fully lined with carved terracotta tiles. The bricks of the Aisha Bibi mausoleum are decorated with 60 varieties of patterns, including koshka muyes, hexagonal stars and floral ornaments. The design of tiles is very poetic. It is not without reason that poetic lines are carved on the columns of the Kufic style of Arabic writing. By the way, few people know this fact, but if you go around the mausoleum from the back and count down 18 tiles from top to bottom, you can see a small passage of the poem that Karakan dedicated to his beloved. And it is written there, Autumn, clouds, the earth is beautiful. It's sad in a way, but beautiful. Ah, why no one dedicated poetry to me? At the entrance to the mausoleum, there are rose bushes of unprecedented beauty. In Sufi poetry, the rose was revered as a deity and an object of love. Karakan would love the design of his beloved's mausoleum. But the terracotta tiles at the mausoleum of the lovely Aisha are beautiful not only from the external side, they are also musical. The Oxacals, old keepers, said that in the old days, if a man went inside the mausoleum and spoke in an undertone, he could be heard in the street at a distance of 25 meters from the building. If you decompose the bricks and hit them with a metal object, then you could hear musical sounds that make up the melody. The secret of the musical bricks of the mausoleum is in the special manufacturing method. The tiles were not burned, instead copper, gold and animal fat were added to the clay. On the preserved original bricks of the mausoleum, in some places one can see oxidized copper. Today the secrets of making such bricks are lost. The mausoleum acquired its original historical appearance in 2005 following the results of a full-scale restoration. Only Sauron clay was used for restoration. It is very similar in composition to its medieval counterpart. 
tiles were made by craftsmen manually as many centuries ago. Such a caring attitude affects how people feel themselves in the mausoleum. Today, big groups of pilgrims come to the burial place of the Casa Juliet. Along the way, they visit several holy places. Aisha Bibi Mausoleum is usually the last on the list. Women come to ask for conjugal happiness and motherhood. Well, we have a group of followers. Well, we have a group of pilgrims. We are deeply religious. We generally came to visit not only Aisha Bibi Mausoleum, we started our journey from Aristan Baba, the main holy figure of the Kazakh land. Then we went to Gauharana's burial place, then to Koja Akhmet Yasawi Mausoleum. After the Mountain of Angels, we were at Agbura Mountain. And after all this, we came here. Aisha Bibi is always the last one in our pilgrimage route. She has very strong female energy. I love her. I even call her lovingly Aishunya. The story of the childless Bai Bai Bori, who together with his wife, visited holy places and begged God for an heir is described in the epic Alpamis Bater. After that, they have a long-awaited son who was named Alpamis. Going for a pilgrimage to the holy places is an ancient tradition among Kazakh people. This is why there are so many pilgrims around mausoleums. It is amazing how pagan and Muslim traditions are interwoven here. Pilgrims observe a pre-Islamic ritual. Before entering inside, they go around the mausoleum in the direction of the sun. However, at the same time, they read prayers and perform ablution, or direct. Aida told us that the tour starts early on Friday morning and ends on Sunday evening. We asked a pilgrim from Almaty why she had the spiritual need to visit holy places. I go to pilgrimages like this one because I feel that it rejuvenates me restarts my conscience. I think that many of us, in the usual hectic daily life, need such trips, where we can communicate with ourselves and pray for health for our relatives. That will help us clean our karma, karma of our loved ones, relatives, our ancestors. It is a bow to our ancestors in a way too. From the Aisha Bibi Mausoleum, we took away the blessing of the Kiprand Jatinan, or seven flapjacks. People attach sacred importance to the preparation of flapjacks. The tradition is called the Ascension of Smell. Worshippers believe that if they feed the souls of their deceased ancestors, they will not die. A similar pre-Islamic ritual of feeding souls was preserved in connection with the cult of saints among the Kazakhs gradually was organically woven into Muslim rites. Now the flapjacks are usually fried on Fridays, because it is believed that on the fifth day of the week, Allah released the spirits so they can visit their native places. We didn't have to travel long. 20 steps and we are on the next location, Babaji Katun Mausoleum. By the way, next to the Aisha Bibi mausoleum, you will see a small mausoleum and you might wonder what it is. This is the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi's nanny, who devoted her whole life to caring for that mausoleum. People thought it would be right to bury the nanny next to Aisha. Legends say that Aisha's mother, Anwar Anna, could not let her daughter go on an unfortunate trip alone. She ordered the nanny, Babaji Katun, to go with Aisha and protect her from any adversity. From birth, Babaji Katun raised Aisha, taught her how to read and write, as well as taught her Arabic and Persian languages. One thing reassures me, Babaji, that you are next to my girl, Anwar Anna said when Aisha and Babaji were leaving. When Aisha Bibi died of a snake bite, the nanny grieved over her death for a long time. And then she settled nearby, and until the end of her life, she was the keeper of the mausoleum. The faithful nanny briefly outlived her beloved child. To this day, the image of Babaji Katun is the symbol of devotion. 
After the death of the nanny of his bride, Karakan ordered to build her a mausoleum next to the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi. On the portal of the main facade of the tomb of Babaji Khatun, the remains of an embossed inscription in Arabic have been preserved. You can read the lines. The majestic tomb called Babaji Khatun. Its builder is... According to experts, the mausoleum of Babaji Khatun, built in the 11th century, is quite well preserved since the age of the monument is almost a millennium. On the walls, symbolic images of the moon and the sun are still clearly visible in the form of the emblem of the god Tengri. The building of the mausoleum is crowned with a faceted drum, which served as the basis for the 16 rib conical dome, which has not survived to this day. The presence of a rib tent and a drum brings together the mausoleum of Babaji Khatun with the monuments of Khorasm. In 1981, the dome was reconstructed according to the project of the Institute of Kaz Project Restoration. And in 2002, the mausoleum of Babaji Khatun was completely restored. Since 1982, the mausoleum has been under state protection. People visit such structures as places of spiritual power to receive positive energy. Well, holy places are not by chance considered to be holy. I believe that there are such nooks, places, which really possess a certain holy energy on our planet. And when you are there, you experience different emotions, maybe enlightenment and rejuvenation. I think if a person travels and if he finds out that there is a holy place nearby, I think it's necessary to at least make a short stop there, to feel the energy and then proceed with their journey, although filled with a sacred spirit and energy. We leave the vicinity of the ancient city of Taraz and are in a hurry to discover an authentic Turkestan. We ask the guide why Taraz and its surrounding area are so attractive for the tourists. Perhaps due to its antiquity, the city of Taraz has a certain special power, which to this day attracts people from all over Kazakhstan and the whole world, igniting a genuine interest. The objects of attraction are the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi and Kara Khan, as well as the unsolved mystery of Akhetas. Everyone who comes to visit Taraz must visit this wonderful mausoleum of Aisha Bibi and Kara Khan. As you noticed, on warm days, in the summer, in the fall, and also in the spring, there are lots of people here. The ancient city fascinated us, made us turn back and think. We drove more than half the route. Despite the fact that we travel by comfortable transport, long journeys are not easy. But at heart, each expedition member perceives this path as a kind of pilgrimage, a kind of journey to meet their ancestors. We asked about the emotions they have experienced. After this expedition, I would like to fill in the gaps of the knowledge that I already have and learn more new information. First of all, I want to tell my family everything about the trip. And second of all, I plan to bring my family here. Well, to be honest, it's my first time on such an expedition. I was delighted. I visited places that I have never been to before and did not know that we have such beautiful historical places. In general, there were a lot of good impressions. Today we have seen three mausoleums that are connected by one legend. The film crew of Across Central Asia plunged into a medieval love story, which is so rare in the modern world. We learned how beautiful monumental architecture appeared in Taraz. How old was Aisha Bibi when she was bitten by the snake and who is the symbol of fidelity and devotion on the shores of Talas? Aziza took a photo at the Karakan Mausoleum. She was worried about her wrong outfit and pinned up to the fact that no one ever dedicated poetry to her. That was almost a real pilgrim tour. Stay with us. New adventures are guaranteed.